So today, I'm not going to really tell you something new, but I will tell you about LU factorization, which is nothing new, LU. So this is nothing other than interpretation of Gaussian elimination. It is not something new, but it is very useful and very interesting topic. So we'll go through it. We'll go through, through an example. Okay. The, so I will go through an example, and when we finish this example, you will understand exactly what it is and how simple it is and why is it is why it is useful. If you don't understand any point, please stop me and ask. As I said last week, don't be afraid to ask silly questions. You can ask them. You can afford them when you are in the first year and first semester. After two years, you cannot. So you can stop me and ask. Let's take this example, matrix 2, 1, 1, 4, minus 6, 0, minus 2, 7, 2. OK? And so this is, so you have AX equal to B. So now I am not concerned about this. Because Gaussian elimination, if you realize, has nothing to do with what is in B, right? What you are concerned is you try to bring A into a special form, special case, which, is, which we call upper triangular. So you start from a general matrix, right? You have everything, and you have 0, and you have things here. So by doing some transformations, we want to come from a general matrix to an upper triangular matrix. That is what, LU, what Gaussian elimination does. So therefore, I'm not going to worry about what is B here. At the end of the lecture, I will talk about what happens when we have B. Okay? So we want to bring this into an upper triangular form. So we start 2, 1, 1, 4, minus. So let me just even do the first step here. What is the multiplier now? I want to kill this, right? I want to make this 0. So what is my multiplier? I call that L21. So the, the one you want to kill, you just call it, this is your multiplier, L21. OK, this is second row, first element. This is what you want to make, 0. So this is equal to this divided by this, right? So 4 over 2, which is 2. So we are going to multiply first row by this multiplier and subtract it from the second row, right? How do we do that as a matrix multiplication? I talked about it last week a little bit. So how do we do that? I want to multiply with a matrix from the left so that when I multiply this, <coughs> So this corresponds to 1, 0, 0, minus 2, minus 2, right? Multiplier, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. OK? So when you do that, that's what's going to happen. So first row will not change, right? When you multiply this and that and that, these zeros will kill the second and third rows. And only the first one will contribute. And then you do this, so minus 2 times 2 is minus 4 plus 4, so this is 0. And minus 2 minus 6 is minus 8. And minus 2, 0 and 0, so this is minus 2. And here, this will kill the first two rows, and you will just have the third row. So meaning. What we did in Gaussian elimination is performed by multiplying this matrix from the left. So this is a row operation. Multiply the first row by the multiplier and subtract from the second row. OK, so now we want to now kill this one, right? Using this pivot. This is what we call this pivot equation. So what is the multiplier? L. So I want to take care of this one, right? This is L31, third row. First column, this is minus 2 divided by 2, which is 
minus 1. So what is my matrix that I need to multiply this from left? 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. And what do I have here? Minus, this is 1, right? It's 1, it's minus, minus of that, right? Minus of the multiplier comes here. 1, 0, 1 times 2, 1, 1, 0, minus 8, minus 2, minus 2, 7, 2. Okay? This is, so again, what's going to happen here now? First row doesn't change, isn't it? Second row doesn't change. And what happens in the third row? So this, when you multiply like that, so 2 minus 2 is 0. That's how we, how we picked it. And you multiply with this one, this is 1 plus 7 is 8. And 1 and 2 is 3. So what is the last step? Now I want to kill this off. Isn't it? So this is L, 3, 2. What is that? 8. So this is my second pivot equation, isn't it? So, so this initially for the first column, I use this pivot equation. For the second column now, for now I use this pivot equation, isn't it? If there was none here, if this was 0, what was I going to do? I was going to exchange the rows. So this is 8 divided by minus 8, which is minus 1. So what happens in that case is that, so I will multiply 2, 1, 1, 0, minus 8, minus 2. And this is 0, 8, 3. There is a reason why I am doing this. You will find out very soon, OK? So what's going to happen in 1? 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Then what do I have here? OK. What do I have here? 0, 1, 1. So the result is first row doesn't change. Second row doesn't change by this multiplication. Third row becomes 0. So minus 8 plus 8 is 0. Minus 2 plus 3 is 1. OK? So this is the end of forward elimination, right? Yes? Uh, when did we write minus 2 then? OK. Um, uh, OK. So why did I write? Because I know that I have to multiply this with 2 and subtract it from the second row. This is Gaussian elimination, isn't it? So what we are doing today is to put these words in terms, translate them into matrix multiplication. No, it's, two. it's two. So if you write two there, it's going to be two times two, four, and four more, it's going to be eight instead of becoming zero. So we want to kill this, isn't it? So we want to kill this. We want to make it zero. That's the idea. <coughs> OK. So. We now did some matrix multiplication, and we arrived at upper triangular form. We already learned this in the first week, right? So why am I talking about this? So what I will do is that I will call this matrix is E1. I will call this matrix as E2, and this as E3. So, so what, what is happening is that I have my A, right? What do I do here? I first multiply it with E1, right? Then I took the result and multiplied it with E2 here. And I took this result and multiplied it with E3. And what did I get? I got, let's so call this you, I got this upper triangular matrix U, okay? 
as we proved last week, that matrix multiplication has associative property. That meaning, it doesn't matter which order you multiply them. So I could do the following. I could say, I first multiply E3, E2, and E1, and obtain a matrix, and multiply this matrix with A, and that's going to give me U. OK? I call this E. So you have a matrix called E such that when you multiply with your matrix, it's going to, the result will be upper triangular. OK? So what, how does this matrix, this E, look? Let's, let's have a look at that. So E is E3 times E2. Of course, the order is important, isn't it? In matrix multiplication, you cannot just arbitrarily change the order. It's not like numbers. So let me first multiply this E2 times E1. What do I get? So E1 is 1, 0, 0, minus 2, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Or not 0, 0, 1. Uh, yes, this is E1, and E2 is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, right? 1, 0, 1. So let's do it together. OK. So let's multiply this together. So what do we, what do we get? First row remains the same. Second row remains the same, right? And what happens in the third row? This becomes 1, right? And this becomes, remains 0, and you have here 1. So this is E2 times E1. So E is equal to E3 times E2 E1. So what is E3? It's here, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. OK? And this is 1, 0, 0, minus 2, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So what do I have? Again, first two rows will not change, right? Minus 2, 1, 0. What's going to happen in the third row now? So it is 0 <laughs> minus 2 plus 1. So it is minus 1. And this one is going to be, then this is 1. And this is going to be 1. OK? So it is lower triangular. OK? Note this. And these are, by the way, this is minus 1. Let me just make sure. So that's not, it's not important, but let's check, OK? This is minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. This is 0, 1, 0, it is 1. So this is. 0, 0, and 1. Yes, it's, it's right. OK? Hmm? Must be 1. Which one? This is minus 1. This one? OK, let's see. No, not yet. Not, not that one. OK, you are confused. So what I will do now is, I will do something in the other board in a different manner. What I will say is that I will ask a question now. So I will start from the other end. I have a u, 2, 1, 1, 0, minus 8, minus 2, 0, 0, 1. Okay? 
the question I ask now is, how can I cancel the last step of Gaussian elimination and go to the previous step by doing a matrix multiplication from left? OK? So what, can, what should I multiply this with so that, so 2, 1, 1, 0, 8, minus 8, minus 2, 0, 0, 1. What I will do is that I will take this and add it here. So 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0. So minus 1, 1. OK? So let's multiply this. What do we get? Just, I know the result, but let's do it together, right? So we multiply this. This first row is the same. Second row is the same. OK? And third row is minus 1. So this is 0. This is 8. And this is, this is plus, this is 3. So we, we, we went back there, OK? So this was, this is the multiplier minus of the multiplier. So let me write this in terms of the things. So what is this here, really? Let's start using symbols. 0, 1, 0, 0. What is this? L, 3, 2. What did I use there? It was minus L, 3, 2, right? So that was the confusion, OK? Minus L, 3, 2. When you are doing forward elimination, the minus of the multiplier comes into the matrix that you multiply it. And in, when you are going backwards, OK, this is what it is. So I will call this L3, OK? So I want to now go even one step further back. So what should I do? So how did I obtain this one, right? I multiplied with that one, OK? I will say now, how do I go? How, what can I multiply this? 0, minus 8, minus 2, 0, 8, 3, with something from here, OK? So that the result is that one, 2, 1, 1. 0, minus 8, minus 2, minus 2, 7, 2. So what should happen here is that what we did there to, to do the elimination, right? So it's going to be 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. And this is going to be minus 1, 0, 1. Let's multiply and see if this checks, OK? So the first row, of course, these two kills the second and third rows. I keep repeating so that it sticks, OK? Second one will we, we'll kill the first row and the third row. And let's look at here. So what matters is here, OK? So minus 1 times 2, 0 times 0, 1 times 0. So this is minus 2. Minus 1 times 1 is minus 1. This is 0. And 3, so it is 2. This 7, what happened to 7? One second. Did I jump over? I, ju I jumped one step over, right? <laughs> OK. The hip here. OK. Yeah, I did step over. Right? So this is not wrong, but this is. The next step, OK? Let me just go one step further. OK. So I am here now. So I want to build this one, right? And that was this one. So 1 minus 1. Yeah, this, that's OK. This is right, isn't it? So we got that. We are back here, isn't it? Minus 2, 7, 2. So that's OK. This is 
L2. Now, I will restore this one, OK? So what do I have here now? So far, I have L3 U. I obtained that one, and that is this, right? Then I multiplied it with L2. I obtained this one. So I want to go one step further and multiply this with something. So 2, 1, 1, 0, minus 8, minus 2, minus 2, 7, 2. So I want to multiply with something. So what am I going to get? A itself, right? 2, 1, 1. That's 4, right? 4, minus 6, 0, minus 2, 2. So again, I go back to the first multiplier. So this is 1, 0, 0. You learn the game now. 2, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Let's check this, OK? So this is doing the opposite of that in the right order. So when you multiply with 2, 1, 1, it's the same, right? It's the same. So 2 times the first row, so 2, 0, and 0. So it is 4. 2 and minus 8 is minus 6. 2 minus 2 and 0, so it is 0. And this doesn't change. So this, I call this L1. So L1 times L2 times L3A is U is A. OK? So again, associative property L1, L2, L3, U is A. So I call this L. OK? So this gives you L, U is equal to A. So what is this L? OK? We didn't like that matrix. I said this is. You have blow diagonal is like this. So let's see what we have here, OK? As a matter of fact, uh, let me show you what, what is the real problem there before I go further in symbols. Let me go back and do this with symbols, OK? E1, E3, E1. So E1 was equal to 1, 0, 0, minus L2, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, right? And E2 was 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, minus L3, 1, 0, 1. E1, E3 was? 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, L3, minus L3, 2, 1. OK? This is, this is what it is in terms of multipliers symbolically. Right? So the first multiplier was 2. So we put there minus 2. So I have everything there. I didn't erase anything. Right? So the second multiplier was minus 1. So I put there plus 1. And the third multiplier was minus 1 again. And I put there plus 1. So I will do the continuation of this here. OK? Let me get. So E is equal to, let me just spare, separate here. E is equal to. E3 times E2 times E1. Now I'm doing it symbolically. OK, so what is E2 times E1? OK, in the right order. Please tell me that. So what is E1? I circled it there. So 1, 0, 0, minus L2, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. 
and E2 is E, this is z 1, 0, 0. Why is nobody collaborating with me? Is it not understood yet? Should I explain it again? Yes. Yes. You have to do it this way. Exactly, you have to show me that you understood the algorithm. OK, I'm not looking for the result. Um, I would like to see in the exam that you understand how it is done, the algorithm, step by step, like a computer. OK? Next week quiz. Next week quiz, yes. Next week quiz. Exactly. So that's why I'm just going through it one by one, OK? I will repeat it one more time if necessary. You have to make sure you understand this. OK? So E2 is there, right? So 1, 0, 1, 0. And this is minus L31. So we already did it with numbers. So I'm now doing it with the symbols so to generalize it, right? So what is this equal to? First row remains the same. Second row remains the same. Third row minus, so you multiply this with this, minus L31. OK, multiply with 0, that's it. And the third one is 0, 1. OK? So E3 times E2 times E1 is then? What is E3? 0, so 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. What is this? Minus L3, 2, 1. 1, 0, 0, minus L2, 1, 1, 0, minus L3, 1, 0, 1. And so this tells me first two rows will remain the same. And this one now, let's look at this one. So this is 0 times 1, minus and minus so plus L3, 2 times L2, 1. OK, plus, minus L31. Let me just make some room here, OK? OK, then this is minus L32, and this is 1. For the reason why I wrote this is that you have this element here is sophisticated. It's not, it doesn't have a one-to-one -one correspondence with a simple way of showing it in terms of the multipliers, okay? But in LU decomposition, as we will now observe, there is no such thing. It's very nice, okay? Let's see how, how, how nice it is, okay? Any questions? So I will start erasing. <coughs> yes, Brian. What? Why did we symbolize? To see that uh, the, the relationship between multipliers and the resulting E matrix is not very simple. Okay, It has multiplication of the multipliers on different. You can imagine that if it was 5 by 5 or 100 by 100, you would have lots of complicated coefficients to, to compute. So you couldn't, when you see now, what we do for when we compute L, it's so easy, OK, to, make, to see the difference. So L is equal to L1, L2, L3, right? So L3 is what? L3 is right there, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. 0, L3, 2, 1, right? How did I obtain this? This is L3. How did I get this? Start right there. So I, how do I go back from U to the previous step, right? We did several steps. Step by step, we went from A to U. 
So the, the, what we are doing is, okay, we now have you, but how do I step back? One step at a time. Every step we call it L3, L2, and L1. Okay. And L2, so I'm there now doing this, L2 is what? It is one zero 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 one zero. This is L three one zero one. Okay. Okay. This what is the result of this? This is L two. So first row remains the same. Second row remains the same. Third row becomes L three one. This multiplied with this, right? L3 1 times 1, 0 times 0, Ibrahim, huh? 1 times 0. So it is L3 1. Okay, now multiply with this one. L3 1 times 0 is 0, 0 times 1 is 0, L3 2. And multiplying this with this, 0, 0, and 1. Okay, now L1 times L2 times L3 is 1, 0, 0. So what is this? L, 2, 1. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And you have here 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, L, 3, 1, L, 3, 2, and 1. Okay? So let's do the multiplication and we will have the happy end. Okay? So what is this? First row remains the same. Second row, L2, 1 times 1, right? 1 times 0, so, and 0 times this. So it is L2, 1. So second row into second column, L2, 1 times 0 is 0, 1 times 1 is 1, and 0 times this, so this is 1. And L2, 1 is 0, 0, and 0. And this is now, this, of course, means third row remains the same. So, what do you have here now? No intermingling of different multipliers, isn't it? So you just, when you are doing Gaussian elimination, just record your multipliers in a register and just put them in the appropriate place. That's it. Even if it is 100 by 100, you will just your, you do your forward elimination. In every step, whatever multiplier you obtain, just put it, put it here. You start building your L immediately. And what you will get in the end is U as well, right? So that is the reason. So E times A is U. And of course, this E, we have all the components of this. We, we did that. But when you multiply them together, we didn't like the result. Then we said, OK, since we are doing is just forward elimination, all we need to record is, let's just keep in mind what were the multipliers were. And then say, well, how do you go from U to A? Then we said, OK, we found a way so that when you multiply with L with U, you go back A to A, OK? That's it. OK. Is, is LU factorization clear? What is LU factorization is that it's a side product that while we are doing a Gaussian elimination to solve a system of linear equation, a smart guy observed that we can do much more than that. As a matter of fact, in one shot, while we are solving this, we can get a factorization of A in a special form. You remember in the first class of this linear algebra, I told you a scientist approach. I said that we first know how to solve a problem in a special case, OK? Then we ask the question, how can I come to how can I transform my general problem into a special problem? So this is exactly a beautiful example of that, OK? So we said that, for example, if you have an upper triangular
Let's say you have an upper triangular system of linear equation. It's so easy to solve, isn't it? So you don't need any Gaussian elimination, nothing. As a matter of fact, Gaussian elimination is used to bring it in this form. So what do you do? You just, if you multiply this, so it is minus x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 1. 2x2 plus 2x3 is equal to 4. 3x3 is equal to 3, right? So what you do is that you first solve this. Then you substitute in the previous one. This we call this back substitution. So it is 2x2 plus 2x3 is 1 is equal to 4. That is 2x2 is 2x2 is, is oh, I mean, I'm so lucky. <laughs> I'm not lucky, of course. Eh? I picked it. So you just take this and compute the right hand side. It's not luck. OK, so you take this. So you know x2 and x3, then you compute 1. Minus x1 plus x2 is 1 plus x3 is 1. OK, so that gives you minus x1 is equal to minus 1, which is. So when you have an upper triangular system of linear equation, it's very easy to solve. Right? Back substitution is enough. No division, even almost no multiplication. Same thing is true for lower triangular, OK? Let's say I have a lower triangular, 1, 0, 0, 5, 1, 0, minus 2, 3, 1, times x1, x2, x3, OK? OK, how do I solve this? It's so easy. Again, like upper triangular one, this is also very easy to solve. So let me write it here. This means x1 is equal to 1. 5 x1 plus x2 is equal to 4 minus 2 x1 plus 3 x2 plus x3 is equal to minus 2. So what do I do here? Now I do forward elimination, right? When it's lower triangular. So this is x1 is 1. It's already there. So x2 is equal to 4 minus 5x1, which is, again, 4 minus 5, which is minus 1. And x3 is equal to minus 2 plus x1 minus 3x2, which is minus 2 plus 1 minus 3 times minus 1. So which is minus 2 plus 1 plus 3. So it is 2. So when you have upper triangular or lower triangular matrices, you have the solution in one shot. Tuck, tuck, tuck. You just do forward elimination or backward elimination, depending on if it is upper triangular or lower triangular, you have the solution, right? So if you can decompose any matrix into LU form, multiplication of a lower triangular, upper triangular form, then you can do so many things very easily. So what is the use of, why did we talk about, spend one lecture on this? OK, so when you have AX equal to B, OK, let's say you already did LU decomposition de and you have LUX is equal to B. This is how you solve it, very easy. You just say, let me call, rename this as Y, OK? So what you have is LY is equal to B. How do you solve LY? L is a lower triangular matrix. Do you need to do any Gaussian elimination or anything? Just very simple, right? 
just solve for y from here, and then ux is equal to y, isn't it? ux, I name this as y. When from here, you solve for x. So you do one uh, forward elimination and one backward elimination, you have the solution. Why is this good? Because this relies on the fact that Gaussian elimination is independent of the right-hand side. So this B has nothing to do with Gaussian elimination. It doesn't change the multipliers. It doesn't change what is the pivot equation. Nothing. So you can take, you, you can take just A by itself and perform LU factorization on it. So if you, have, if you have an application, an engineering problem that you have thousands of Bs, that B changes all the time, but A is always the same, OK? Think of B as an input. Input is changing all the time, right? The input that's coming into a system, a signal or whatever is coming into the system, can change all the time. But A stands for system. System remains the same. And you need to solve this. Here it is. So you, once you perform a little decomposition for A, and then just one forward element. So let's let's do this. Okay, let's do one example. The one we did, I have it written down here. Mm -hmm. So the example we did. So A was again. What was it? So two one one four minus six zero minus two seven two. Okay, we found that L is one zero zero two one one minus one minus one one. And we found also U was equal to two one one zero minus eight minus two. 0, 0, 1. Okay? Let's say I want to solve Ax equal to b, and b is 5 minus 2 and 9. In there, there is one and one must be Yes, of course. OK? So what do I do now? Do I start just performing Gaussian elimination on this? No. I already have L and U, right? So I will just solve this. Ly is equal to B, meaning L is here. 1, 0, 0, 2, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 1, 1. This is y1, y2 y3, and this is equal to 5 minus 2 and 9. So what do I have? Harun, what do I have here now? y1 is what? Why aren't you following? Ibrahim, what is y1? Good. And second equation. 2y1 plus y2 is equal to minus 2. So y1 is 5, then this is 2 times 5 plus y2 minus 2. So this is 10. So y2 is minus 12. And the last equation will give us what is this? Minus y1, minus y2, plus y3. Minus y1, minus y2, plus y3 is equal to 9. So this is y1 was minus 5 plus 12 plus y3 is equal to 9. So this is
So y2 is equal to 2. Huh? Y3. Y3 is equal to 2. Okay? Then, what do I do now? I just need to solve for x1, x2, x3. So, I already have now y. So, tell me please. 5 minus 12 and 2, right? Okay. So, ux equal to y, meaning u is 2, 1, 1, 0, minus 8, minus 2, 0, 0, 1, times x1. This is the real solution, right? This is the solution we are after. That y is an intermediate thing. 5, minus 12, and 2. So, from here, Last one I get, what is it? Ibrahim, what is this? X3 is 2, right? From the last equation. Now I'm doing backward substitution. Then second equation will give me minus 8x2 minus 2x3 is equal to minus 12. So minus 8x2, and this is minus 4, minus 12. So this is, again, minus 8x2 is equal to minus 8x2 is equal to 1. And you substitute this in the first one. The first equation gives you 2x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 5. So 2x1 plus 1 plus 2 is equal to 5. So 2x1 is equal to 3, 2, and x1 is 1, by coincidence. <laughs> OK? So this is LU decomposition. And the application of it, why is it useful? So once you have LU decomposition for A, for any new B, you don't need to do any more factorization. You just automatically program this, and you automatically get the solution. One forward substitution, one backward substitution, and you have the result. That's it. OK, what could go wrong? Are we done with LU decomposition? There is one little point we should be careful about, right? Because we are talking about not the solution of system of linear equation only, we are talking about the composition of the matrix itself. Therefore, what could go wrong? Interchange. Yes. If we need to then interchange, then the decomposition will not be the decomposition of the original A, but a decomposition of interchanged version of that A. Right? Let me give you an example. Any question on this one? OK, so you have it on the video as well. but So we'll try to put the video online as soon as possible this week, OK? So that you can, next week you have an exam. I want all of you to get 100. When students fail, the professor fails. That's what, how I believe. That's why your success is very important for me. But I'm not going to give you grade unless you really do it. So there's a dilemma there. OK? Let's say you have a is equal to 0, 2, minus 1, 2, 3, 1, minus 2, 1, 2. OK? So I want to do LU decomposition on this. Can I do that? What is my first multiplier? So what is L21? It is 2 divided by 0. So I am stuck. So what do I do? I do an interchange. So I take a P matrix, OK? 
interchange. This matrix will just interchange the first two rows. OK? So what, how, what is that matrix? 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. That's it. If you multiply with this one, then you have P times A is 0. So this is 2, 3, 1. 0, 2, minus 1, minus 2, 1, 2. OK? Now I can decompose this, right? I can say that P times A is L times U. So I do not anymore do decomposition, LU decomposition for A, but just a row interchange version of that one, I can do that. Of course, what if this was also 0? Then I will go to the third one. Until I find the pivot, I will continue. Then I will multiply with that one. Okay? This, for example, this first one was enough for us. Otherwise, I would have continued to look for a pivot. If there is no pivot, then what, what happens? There is no there is no solution, right? There is no LU decomposition of that matrix. What do we call it? We call it singular matrix, isn't it? Last week we talked about it. Singular matrices do not have inverses, et cetera, et cetera. OK. Let's do an example. Let's do LU decomposition of this, OK? So, so that this is another example that we, we have a chance to do another example for our exam, right? So what is the multiplier? So I start from this one, 2, 3, 1, 0, 2, minus 1, minus 2, 1, 2. OK, what is L2, 1 now? It is 0, isn't it? This divided by that, OK? So I'm not, I don't need to do that again. So what is L3, 1? It is, min so it's, let me do the division here, minus 2 divided by 2, right? So I don't need to do those multiplications. I can do my, I just need to calculate, right? This is minus 1. I will keep that in mind. And then I will just write it, OK? So what is, after, so what is the next matrix is 2, 3, 1, 0, 2, minus 1, and this is? So this just edit here, right? This is what it means. Multiply this with minus 1, edit to here. So this is 0, 4, and 3. OK, next step. As you see, I'm not doing matrix multiplication. I'm just, that was a way to build it up. So what is it now? Well, what do I need? I need, I need to kill this one. So L, 3, 2 is 4 over 2, which is 2. So the result is 2, 3, 1, 0, 2, minus 1. And this is 0, 0. So twice this is subtracted from this one. So minus 2, 3 minus minus 2, which is 5. OK? Here it is. This is U. And what is L? I will just write it. OK, 1, 0, 0. What do I have here? L2, 1. What is it? 0. This is 1, 0. What is I have here? L3, 1. This is minus 1. This is 2. That's it. Would you like to verify that they really do, do give? When you multiply, then they give us. What are they going to give us? P times A, isn't it? Because we interchange the row. So L U, so I'm what I'm claiming is that P times A is equal to L times U. So simple, isn't it? Why did we do it such a long way? Because we need to understand the idea behind it. If I, if I were to tell you guys, and unfortunately in some universities they do it like that, this is how we obtain U. 
and this is L. Why is it? You don't need to worry about it, so you need to worry about it. So L, U, just verification. You don't need to do this unless I ask you to do that. So L times U is what? 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 2, 1, and u is 2, 3, 1, 0, 2, minus 1, 0, 0, 5. Two, three, this is 1, right? 2, 3, 1. Two, three, one. OK. So this means first two rows don't change, right? 2, 3, 1, 0, 2, minus 1. And this now happens. So minus 1 times 2 is minus 2, 0, 0. So this is minus 2. Minus 3 plus 4, which is 1, and plus 5, which is 6. So I made a mistake, right? Somewhere. Huh? This which one? Which where did I make mistake? Minus one times two is minus two. Zero, zero. So minus two. Minus three. Four, which is one. Zero, which is one. And this one, minus one, minus two is minus three, plus five is two. So is this A? This is PA. That's it. So let me solve. For this A, let's say, let me continue example, continue example, okay? I say for this A, AX is equal to B, okay? So since I don't have LU decomposition of A itself, how do I solve it? Okay, so let's say A, A is that one and B is one, six, one. Okay? So what do I have here? So let me write it so that we don't get confused. Zero, two, minus one, two, three, one, minus two, one, two, okay? Times x one. This is what it means. Later on, we are not going to write this many details, okay? We will be more abstract. Okay, this is what we have. So we do not have LU decomposition for this A, so we multiply it with this P. We interchange first row and second row, right? So we obtain this one. P A is equal to LU, okay? Then you have P A X is equal to L U X is equal to uh, P B, right? So you multiply A X equal to B by P. So both sides, you multiply, so it doesn't change the solution of the system of, it is a new system of linear equation with the same solution as the previous one. It is not the same system of linear equation. It is very similar, but they have the exact same solution. The, that's the whole idea behind Gaussian elimination. Isn't it? We'll never forget that. OK. So I have this. So what do I do now? I say this is y. OK, so Ly is equal to Pb instead of B. So in the previous example, we just had B, now we have PB. So we solve for Y from here, and then we say UX is equal to Y. Okay, let's do that.
So L, we have it. Where is L? L is there. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 2, 1, times y1, y2, y3. So PB means interchange B2 with B1, right? So second row, this comes here and that goes there. So 6, 1, 1. So in this case, where we have y1 is what? What is y1? What is y1? What is y1? Very good. And what is y2? What is y2? Yes. Y2 is 1. Yes. Please follow. OK, and y3, so minus y1 plus 2y2 plus y3 is equal to 1. So this is minus 6 plus 2 plus y3 is equal to 1. So this is minus 4. So y3 is equal to 5. OK. Six, one, and five. Okay. So the last step is ux is equal to y, right? I will just write it here. Here is u, so so this is ux is equal to y. So u is two, three, one, zero, two, minus one, zero, zero, five times x one x2, x3 is equal to y. So it is y1 is 6, y2 is 1, and y3 is 5. So what is x3? 1, right? x2, so 2x2 minus x3 is equal to 1. So 2x2 is equal to 2. So x2 is also 1. And 2x1 plus 3x2 plus x3 is equal to 6. So 2x1 plus 3 plus 1 is equal to 6. So this is x1 also happens to be 1. OK? I hope these two examples gives you when you need to interchange and when not, so to complete LU decomposition. I want to do one example on calculation of inverse as well in this lecture, and last, last hour will be on vector spaces. Okay? So far, what we are talking about is finding the solution of system of linear equations when the number of equations and number of unknowns are the same, OK? So when they are different, you have very peculiar cases. That's what we'll start next lecture. Computation of, of inverse. <coughs> Last week, we explained that One way to generalize, to obtain inverse of a matrix using Gaussian elimination is as follows. So you have A times X, and you want to have these two identity. This is the definition of inverse. And X that satisfies this is called by definition, if X satisfies this, this equation, by definition, x is a inverse, OK? So how do we compute this? We, we said, and we made arguments and explained that we said that, let's apply Gaussian elimination, OK? Ai. Let's, and 
today, the first lecture, we said we just find many E's to bring this to upper triangular form. Then Gauss Jordan said, Jordan said that why stop there? He said, just go backward as well, right? So you find a bunch of many Gaussian elimination steps, all multiplying a row by something, subtract from another one, or multiplying the entire row or dividing the entire row by something. All these are allowed, and they don't change the solution, right? So we call this E. We said that you do all those, and in the end, you continue until you have identity here and some garbage here. OK? But make sure this is identity. OK. So then we said that this E times AI, if it is equal to, this is, of course, block matrices. OK? This is n by n. This is n by n. This is n by n. So these are, so this just block by block, if you equate them, you will have EA and multiplication of any matrix by identity matrix will give you itself is equal to I. So this tells you that the first, these two blocks tells you that EA is equal to identity. That means E is A inverse. Then the second one tells you that, so you don't need to worry about what was this multiplication of all these E's, etc. Don't worry about it. Second part tells you that Y is equal to E, therefore A inverse. Okay? So the garbage that we call is not really garbage, it is A inverse. So when you do all these Gaussian elimination steps and in there you have something here, that thing is the inverse of A. Okay? This is a very beautiful result. Again, a direct result of Gaussian elimination. So useful, isn't it? So Gaussian elimination is so useful. Let's do an example quickly on this one. Let's say we have A is equal to 2, 1, 1, 4, minus 6, 0. It's the same one, right? No, it's not. OK. Minus 2, 7, 2. OK. So is it? OK, good. So I want to find out this. So I just put this together. So I will just apply 2, 1, 1, 4, minus 6, 0, minus 2, 7, 2, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. OK? So what is the multiplier here to get L21? So let's use this terminology, is equal to 4 divided by 2, which is 2, right? So this is 2, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. This becomes 0. And twice this, subtracting from this one, so minus 6, minus 2 is, please, wake up, <laughs> minus 8. And 0 minus 2 is minus 2. And we continue here. This is minus 2, 1, 0, right? So how about to knock this out, L31 is this divided by that. So minus 2 divided by 2, which is minus 1. So you multiply this with minus 1 and subtract it from here, OK? So you add them here. So you said minus. So this is 0. This is 8. This is 3. This is 1. This is 0. And this is 1. Just Gauss and Emanation. Okay? Here I am not doing 
LU decomposition, but of course, it's here. It's because I will continue further. OK? So I continue. What is now, what is my next pivot? So the first pivot was this. I used this equation, pivot equation. OK, this, is, this pivot, I used it to make this 0 and this 0. Now I will go to first column is finished. I only have one non-zero number there. Okay, I don't allow anymore. Otherwise, I am not finished. So I go to the second one, and this is non-zero. So this is my second pivot equation. So what is my multiplier here? L third row and second column. It is eight divided by minus eight, which is minus one. Okay. So I. That means I just add this row to that one. OK? So 2, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 8, minus 2, minus 2, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, and this minus 1, 1, 1, right? OK, now I finished my forward elimination. So what does Jordan do? Jordan doesn't stop here. Jordan says, let me go backwards now, because I want to have an identity here. OK, so since I have here conveniently 1, I just say, OK, the multiplier to go back from here, what am I going to do? Multiply this last row by 2 and add it here, right? So this becomes. 0, 0, 1, minus 1, 1, 1, 0, minus 8, and this becomes 0, twice this added to this. So minus 2 and minus 6. What I did here in my notes, I first divided by 8. So let me do that so that what I have here, I don't get stuck on, your, on the blackboard. So let me do that. OK. So you divide all the rows by, so this you divide the first row by 2. This becomes 1, 1 half, 1 half, 1 half, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1 fourth, 1 fourth. Minus 1 over 8, 0, 0, 0, 1, minus 1, 1, and 1. OK, so you divide it by 2, so this is 1 half, 1 half, 1 half. Divided by 8, this is 1 minus 2 over minus 8, so it is 1 over 4, 1 over 4 minus 1 over 8, and 0, 0, 0. This is already 1, so there is no need to divide. OK, now I just subtract 1 fourth time this from this. So what do I get? Let me continue after the break. It's going to take too long. OK? OK. We had a very, so we had a very, you can record this as well, kind of. <laughs> we had a professor, a very old professor, when I was undergrad here. His name was Fikri Uzgören. He's now uh, dead for many years. Okay, he's not alive anymore. Allah rahmet eylesin. He was very, very tough professor. He would never give you, you, you expect 100. You would, if you get 50 and you, did, you think you did everything right, you are very lucky if you get 50, OK? We entered one exam and with 200 people. I was expecting 10 out of 10. And I got 5, and I was the only one who passed. Everybody in 199 failed. So he was a very tough guy. Okay? And our professors tell us that 
uh, younger than him. They said that he was like that when we were his student too. So he's, he's, he has always been like that. He said that in one exam, somebody failed and he insists and comes over and over that, Hojam, I did everything right. Why did I fail? And so he then said, I said, okay, let me have a look at it. I looked at it and he wrote this, okay? This is, by the way, third year student. Mm, okay, here. He said, in his exam paper, I saw this. I told him, he said, I told my student, you write voltage is equal to resistance minus the current. How can you do that? He says, Professor, you did that. You wrote on the blackboard exactly this. I copied it, and this is how you wrote it. And I just wrote in the exam what you showed us on the blackboard. He says that I went back and checked the blackboard, and there was a crack on the blackboard. So when I put there that crack, you know, there's, when I put that, it became like this, OK? So he just took my dot as a minus. He said that even if I write minus, you are not allowed, because this is so, such a basic thing. This is the, the, the basis of electrical engineering, right? Ohm's law. So you cannot, you are not allowed to make mistake in this one. OK, you cannot do this. So this is, you fail <laughs> if you do such a thing or something like this very fundamental error that you, are, you totally missed everything that, that it shows, then there is nothing to discuss and you automatically fail, okay? So if you, in the exams, and you don't know how to multiply two matrices, don't expect to get any grade from this one. Of course, I'm sure you will not have any problem multiplying two matrices. I'm not talking about that's Why should you have any problem? And multiplying two matrices is the, is extremely simple, very well-defined and simple process. OK. So this is where we stop. Let's continue. So what do I do here? I want to continue and finish my computation of my inverse. OK. So 1, 1 half, 1 half. 1 half, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 1, 4, minus 1 over 8, 0, 0, 0, 1, minus 1, 1, 1. So I want to have this part, I want to have it as 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, OK? Identity by doing row operations, OK? I can just erase this and make it identity, right? So that's not allowed. You have to do this by doing row operations. So what should I do? I should multiply this by 1 fourth and subtract it from here, right? This is Gaussian elimination. Now I'm going backward. This is Gauss-Jordan now. We started, Jordan started now. OK, so the last one will remain the same. Minus 1, 1, 1. Now this is. 1 fourth times this, so this is 0, 0, 1. So this is going to be, let's do a calculation here. This is 0 by design. So this is going to be 1, 4 minus, so 1 over 4 times minus 1, right? So this becomes 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4, so 1 half. This becomes one half. So please also check that I don't make mistakes. Okay? So how about this? This is going to be minus one over eight minus one fourth times. I'm now acting like a computer, isn't it? Times one. So this is minus one over eight, minus one over four, this is minus three over eight. Three over eight. And this one. Minus 1 over 4. 
Okay. Okay. Now let's take care of this one. So what will what is the multiplier? This over this. So one half times this subtracted from this row, right? So this is this is because these are zero. This will not change. One one half. So this is going to be zero. Okay. Then this minus one. So one half minus 1 over 2 times minus 1. Is this right? OK. So 1 half, so this is 1. And this, so 0 minus 1 half times, so this is minus 1 half. 0 minus 1 half times this is minus 1 half. OK? These are just on the side. I don't need to keep them there. So what is left is this one, isn't it? So what do I do now? Half of this row is subtracted from here. Right? So 1, then this becomes 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. OK? So what is this? Half of this is subtracted from this. So this is, let me do it on the side here. 1 minus 1 half times 1 half. So this is 3 over 4. And this one, minus 1 over 2, minus 1 half times minus 3 over 8. So that is minus 1 half plus 3 over 16. So this is, put here, 8. So minus 8 plus 3 over 16. So that is minus 5 over 16. So this is minus 5 over 16. And this one, minus 1 half times 1 half times minus 1 over 4. And that is minus 1 half times 1 over 8. So 4 here. So minus 3 over 8. And 1 half minus 3 over 8 minus 1 over 4 minus 1, 1, 1. Good. OK, so what do I have now? What is this? A inverse. Let's, let's double check it. Let's verify it, right? If you made a mistake or something. Just that's the last step. Let's do that here. OK, what was A? 2, 1, 1, 4, 0, minus 2, 7, 2. OK, A inverse is, please read that for me. What is that? 3 over 4. Minus 5 over 16. Minus 3 over 8. What? Half. Ha 1 half. Minus 3 over 8. Minus 1. Over eight. Minus 4. four. Minus one. Four. OK. So A times A inverse is equal to, so 2, 1, 1, 4, minus 6. See, I am not lazy to write it. I am writing it over and over and over. OK, you should do the same so that it sticks. This is 0 times 
3 over 4 minus 5 over 16 minus 3 over 8, 1 half minus 3 over 8 minus 1 over 4 minus 1, 1, 1. Okay, let's just do a few elements. We don't have to do all of it, so let's calculate A11. Ibrahim, now tell me what is A11. Okay. I will write it do the side on the side here two times. Three over four. Okay. Plus one times one over two. Plus one times minus one. One times minus one. So this is three over two plus one over two minus one. So this is 2 minus 1, so it is 1. Okay? So this is 1. As it should be. Okay? Let me calculate, for example, 3, 2 element. So, what is it, Ibrahim? You tell me again. 3, 2 element I will calculate now. What is it? 3, 2. 3, 2 element of the resulting matrix. Okay? So second row with the third column. It is 4 times minus 3 over 8, right? Plus minus 6 times minus 1 over 4 plus 0. Okay, so this is minus 3 over 2 and this is plus 3 over 2. It is 0. So if you check every one of them, you will see that I did, okay? I checked it. Can you use LU decomposition to find inverse? Of course you can, right? This is an obvious application of it. What did I say? I said, I said the following, right? I said AX equal to B. You want to solve this, right? So I said A remains the same, but B changes. Okay? So, so when you have, when you are calculating the inverse, this is identity. So you have this, you have 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, So you take, so you do LU decomposition on this, okay? So LUX, so you call this X1, so column one, okay? Should we call it, so this is column one, okay? XC1, let's say. You solve one, zero, 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 right? Then you have LU decomposition already, XC2, this is zero, one, zero, 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 right? So for every column of identity, you already have a decomposition. If once you have it, you can just use it to compute the columns of your inverse matrix, one by one. So once you have it, you can always utilize it to also uh, obtain inverse matrices, okay? So sometimes people ask this kind of question in exams to see whether you are able to interconnect what you learn in one topic with the other one and can you use them in an integrated manner. So you learn something there and this is something else and how can you use two to obtain solution for something and other alternative solution, things like this. Okay. Yes, what's your name? Utku, Utku. yes Utku. Uh, it's called backward substitution. Bottom to top is backward substitution. Yes. Uh, our pivot equation will be the third row. Will be the third row, yes. Then it will be the second row. Okay, so you will, what, what you did in the forward man, you will do the same thing in the, when you are going backwards. Okay, what you are doing forward, you will do the same thing in the backward. Okay. Okay. Now, vector spaces. 
That's what we'll talk about now. We are finished. So, so far, everything we talked about is, is the algorithm, this is basically Gauss, Gaussian elimination algorithm, and how to solve system of linear equations, how to compute inverse of a matrix, and how, you, how to perform LU decomposition, etc. So this assumes that you have an n by n matrix, and somehow this process doesn't fail, meaning it has a solution, or it's, it, in, it has an inverse, and things like this. Now it is time to look, to have a deeper look into matrices, and the way to do it is through vector spaces. And we will start talking about n by n matrices, and null space, and column space, and row space, and etc. So that's what we will do now. Vector spaces, you are familiar with numbers. We are familiar with, with numbers, real numbers, and natural numbers, and, and you are familiar with uh, base two numbers, zeros and ones, etc. right? And probably, did you hear about complex numbers? What is a complex number? Have you ever heard of complex number? Is there anybody who did not hear about complex number? Okay, what is the root of this? What is the solution of this? X squared plus one. Five. I, right? So you have, so you heard about it. X one, two is equal to plus and minus square root of I. Square root of minus one. Minus one, which is plus and minus I. Okay, so you heard about this. So vector spaces are built upon Field. These are called fields, okay? So these real numbers, complex numbers, these are called fields. These are the basic number theory that vector spaces are built upon. So we will talk about, in this course, we will, we will talk about uh, vector spaces that are based on real numbers and complex numbers. So I'm not going to go into abstract definition of what is a field and what is a vector space in a very abstract way. But in your graduate studies, you should wonder about it. So there are generalizations of this. So we will talk about this in the most simple manner. So we talk about that a vector space is a set of vectors, let's say x1, x2, xn, such that x, xi's satisfy the following conditions. One, any two vector x and y, if any two vector x, y, element of v in vector space, let's say v, okay? We satisfied for x plus y is is element of v. So it is closed. So in, this is a set of vectors such that if you add any two vectors, the resulting vector is element of the same set. Okay. This is one, two. Addition is commutative. So if you 
x plus y is the same as y plus x. 3 addition is associative. Meaning it doesn't matter in which order you add them up. For every x, x in v, you have a minus v such that v plus for every x, okay, x, 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 x plus minus x is equal to zero. Of course, before that, I should say there exists zero vector such that zero plus x is equal to x for every x. Okay. There are other, like, let's say alpha beta times x is equal to alpha times beta times x, meaning you can multiply a vector by a scalar and multiply the result by another scalar, or you can first multiply those two scalars and multiply the vector all together. They will give you the same result, okay? So let's give examples of vector spaces. So let's talk about V, X, Y, okay? In two-dimensional space, R2, you call this R2, right? So you have X and Y. So this is the X coordinate and this is the Y coordinate. So you are familiar with these vectors. In two-dimensional spaces, we give you a column like this. The first one represents the x component of the vector, and the second number represents the y component of the vector. So this is called two-dimensional space. So how do you define addition there? So let's say v is V1 is x1, x1, y1, and V2 is x2, y2. So V1 plus V2 is x1 plus x2, and y1 plus y2. So how do you multiply a vector with a, a scalar? Is just alpha x, alpha y. Okay, we are familiar with this in two-dimensional spaces. Okay. So another one is, this is three-dimensional spaces, x, y, z. We are also familiar with this same manner. Or you have n-dimensional spaces, x1, x2, xn. So addition of vector is multipl uh, multiplication of vector and associative property and all those is obvious here. How about if you have a vector space, the set of the set of uh, three by two matrices? Is this a vector space? Okay, we will ask you this kind of questions. Is this a vector space? Of course, one important thing here is the seventh one. Zero is there, right? Yes. Zero is there. We should never forget that. So three by two matrices. Is this a vector space? Is it? So three by three matrix means what? So we call the elements of this, this A11, A12, 
A21, A22, A31, A32. Right? So this kind of matrices are these vector spaces. So what do we need to check? We need to check these, right? So if you add any two, three by two matrix, do you obtain a three by two matrix? Right? Obviously, right? If you add two, two three by two matrices, the result will be another three by two matrix. Therefore, <coughs> no problem. It satisfies the first requirement. How about associative property? If you add three matrices, does it matter in which order do you add them? So it satisfies the second property as well. So the third one, for every matrix, so what is the zero, zero vector in this case? What is the zero vector in, if this is a vector space? What is the zero vector? Zero, 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 zero all zeros, right? So you have a zero vector, so it is there. So for every x, every vector in this set, do you have another three by two matrix that when you add it to this, you will get zero, zero vector? Obviously you do, right? And does it matter which order, in which order you multiply them? It doesn't matter. And how about if you add zero matrix to this, does it change the result? It doesn't. So therefore, this is a vector space as well, right? So there, so vectors do not always mean this. Okay, let me give you another vector space. Okay, let's take end order polynomials. So this set of <coughs> polynomials with degree at most n. Is this a vector space? This is a vector space. Okay. So, what's her name? Is this a vector space? <laughs> this is a vector space. Why? Is there a zero vector here? If all coefficients are zero, so zero is a polynomial that has degree less than or equal to n, right? So zero is there. What else? For every polynomial, n order or less degree polynomial, do you have another polynomial with the same degree that when you add to this, you will get zero polynomial? Yes, you do, right? Eight and how do you add two polynomials? So if you have, if you have, let's say you have px, one minus x plus two x squared, and qx minus two plus x plus x squared. So of course you have to define the addition. You just add the coefficients of the x's, right? So it is 1 minus 3 plus minus 1 plus 1 x plus 2 plus 1 x squared. So this is minus 2 and 0 times x plus 3 x squared. So addition is well defined and when you add 2 nth order polynomial, you get another nth order or less polynomial, right? You could get less, some x squared or highest 
order could cancel or you could get zero as well. So it is closed under addition and associated property is there. It doesn't matter you had P plus Q or Q plus B, it doesn't matter. So you will get always get the same result. So it is a vector space, right? How about polynomials? How about the set of third order polynomials? Is this a vector space? Be careful. The set of third order polynomials, exactly third order polynomials. Is this a vector space? Does it have a zero? It doesn't. Zero is not a third order polynomial, right? That's why I underlined it said at most n, right? And if I say exactly third order, that doesn't include zero polynomial. Therefore, the set of third order polynomials, so this is yes, and this set of exactly third order polynomials is not a vector space. Why? There are many reasons. Zero is not a member, right? Zero does not belong to that set. Zero is a zeroth order polynomial. It's not exactly third order polynomial. And when you add any two third order polynomial, you don't always get a third order polynomial, right? For example, if I add one plus x cube, this is, let's say, px, and qx is one plus x minus x cube. If I add these two polynomials, px plus qx, I will have one plus x cube plus one plus x minus x cube, and that's going to give me two plus x, which is not a third order polynomial, so it's not closed under addition. So even if it fails in one condition, that means it's not anymore a third order polynomial. So linear independence. Let's have a vector space V with vectors x1, OK? Then x1, x2, xn are called linearly independent if if alpha 1 x1 plus alpha 2 x2 alpha n xn equal to 0 has only one solution as alpha 1 alpha 2 So if this is the only solution, if, if this is the only solution, then it is called linearly independent. Let me, let me tell you what this means, OK? Let's take example. <coughs> Maybe you didn't write it here. Example R2. Let's take 
two vectors. X1 is equal to 1, 0. X2 equal to 0, 1. Very easy, right? Are these linearly independent? So this is a definition, isn't it? So if, so if are these two vectors linearly independent? OK. Answer, I will check. So alpha 1, 1, 0 times alpha 2, 0, 1 equal to what? Alpha 1, 1 times alpha 1 plus 0, right? And 0 times alpha 1 plus alpha 2. This should be 0 vector. So what solution does this have? Alpha 1 is equal to 0. Is there any other solution? To, able, to be able to appreciate this, I have to give you a counterexample. OK? So they are not, these are linearly independent, because the only solution to this equation is that all the alphas are 0. Example two, so x1 is equal to 1 minus 1, x2 is equal to 2 minus 2, OK? Are these two vectors linearly independent? So what do we do? Answer, alpha 1, x1 plus alpha 2, x2. I set this equal to 0 and find solutions. If I only have one solution and if the 0 solution is the only solution, then they are linearly independent. Otherwise, they are linearly dependent. OK, so alpha 1 times 1 minus 1 plus alpha 2 times 2 minus 2 is equal to alpha 1 plus 2 alpha 2. OK, and alpha 1 minus 2 alpha 2 is equal to 0, 0. I set this equal to 0 and looks for a solution. So this tells me, second one tells me alpha 1 is equal to 2 alpha 2, OK? And then I substitute it in this. So this first one tells me alpha 1 is equal to minus 2 alpha 2. And alpha 1 is equal to 2 alpha 2. This is twice. Ah, I'm sorry. This is minus 1. I see there's something wrong here because they are linearly independent. OK? So this is, so second one tells me minus alpha 1 is 2 alpha 2. And basically, both of them gives me the same thing. Alpha 1 is equal to 2 alpha 2. So how many solutions do I have? I can just pick alpha 2 anything I want. And alpha 1 is just twice that. So therefore, these are linearly dependent. So these two vectors are linearly dependent because there is a non-zero solution. So next week, we will continue from here. First lecture will be your quiz. And afterwards, we'll continue this beautiful subject. Yes.